Welcome to one of the past HC exam question videos. In this video, we're going to cover one of the past HC exam questions on the electrochemistry chapter. What I'll do is I'll read for the actual question, and then I'll give you about five seconds to try to pause the video and attempt the question. And when you're ready, just press play, and I'll go over the actual answer itself. So for the question, yeah, this was the actual diagram from the question itself in your past HC exam. And there's a couple of things. You've got your, your nickel electrode, you've got your chlorine, gas coming in from this tube. You have your plat uh, platin platinum um, electrode which is inert. You have a salt bridge and voltmeter as you always do. You've got your nickel solution which is pale green and you have your potassium chloride solution which is colorless and you were that was all given in the actual exam question. A on the diagram clearly label the anode, the cathode and the direction of electron flow. B Write a balanced net ionic equations for the overall cell reaction. C. Calculate the standard cell potential. D. Explain any color changes observed in the cell as the reaction proceeds. Two marks for D, one mark for the other ones. Before you start, uh, in this video I've attached this table. This is a table of standard reduction or uh, potential. And you need to be able to use this table to answer a couple of these questions. So I'll give you five seconds to pause the video and then I'll cover the answers for this question. Right, so I'm back. So for this first part on the diagram, clearly label the anode cathode and direction of electron flow. So what you need to know is what the anode is. So is anode was where oxidation occurs. Uh, cathode was where reduction occurs and your electrons always flow from oxidation so that's loss of electrons at the anode and the, the, the um, electrons are gained at the cathode. So electron flow is always from anode to cathode. So next part is to find out which ones are actually anode and cathode and that's by looking at the standard uh, reduction table. So looking at the reduction table in second which means that anything which is positive or a bigger number than the other ones if you compare the two. So the more, the more positive it is, the more likely it is to be reduced. More likely to be reduced. So let's compare. We actually have chlorine gas, which we have to compare. And we compare chlorine gas to nickel. So those are two half equations. So we have chlorine gas, which is really electronegative. So they love grabbing electrons. So chlorine gas is 1.36 plus 1.36. And nickel is minus 0.23. So chlorine loves to grab electrons, and nickel is much more likely to give away electrons. So based on that, we know that the cathode, which is where the ones that love electrons are, we've got our chlorine gas, which is our cathode. So that platinum here. So clearly label the anode and the cathode. This here is our cathode. Nickel will give electrons, so nickel is our anode. And the electron flow is always from anode to cathode, so it's in this direction, is electron flow. I've done this, you get your mark for this. Next part was write a balanced net ionic equation for the overall cell equation. So what you need to do is a net balanced net ionic equation. So first you write the anode, half equation. And the anode and half equation we have nickel which becomes oxidized, which means it loses two electrons. So it goes from nickel solid to nickel two plus ions and it loses to two electrons. And we've got the cathode. At the cathode, we have, like if you're not sure what happens at the cathode, you can always check that table. It'll tell you what happens at the cathode with chlorine gas. We've got chlorine gas as our anode, uh, cathode. And the potential table will tell you what the equation is. So chlorine gas is right here. So chlorine gas will pick up two electrons and become two chlorine minus. That's from all from that table. So it will pick up those two electrons that were left from the nickel and go into two. So that, but to make sure it's balanced, because it's balanced, two Cl minus. So each of the Cl gives us, takes one electron. That's why we have two of those. And we had two here as well, so it's all balanced. So the overall net equation, I guess what we're actually wanting, the overall one, so the O for overall, 
is you write your cathode first, Cl2. You don't you can ignore the electrons, you don't have to write that in your overall one. You just write Cl2, which is from here, plus nickel solid, which is from there. So that means that chlorine will take electrons from nickel. And then nickel will go to nickel two plus, and chlorine will go to two chlorine minus. So chlorine has picked up the electrons from nickel, and nickel has become oxidized. So this is your half equation and your full equation. So that's your overall equation. So that will also get you a point. And next was calculate the standard cell potential. And the way we do that is again we look at that table. So what I wrote here is. This was the ta this is was of the table. I'm just written them down to make it easier, but I'll show you again where they are. This was of the reduction potential table. So the four chlorine going into chlorine to minus, we have 1.36. This was that straight off the table right here, that value right here. And for nickel, if you look at the table, nickel taking two electrons becoming normal nickel, nickel two plus going into normal nickel. That is right here. And that was a value of minus 0 0.23. Or actually, right, minus 0 0.23. What we have to do, we have to use this equation to find our cell potential. And that's E reduction, so how likely they are to be reduced. And we say that our chlorine is the one that's being reduced. So what we can do is we can just grab that value off that, because that's what's talking about which ones like to be reduced. Plus plus the one that is being oxidized. So in this case, we actually have um, it saying minus, but this is actually how likely it's to be reduced. We're asking how likely it's to be oxidized, but it's giving us how likely it's to be reduced. And the way we know that is because it says nickel will take two electrons to become nickel solid, elemental nickel. So in this case, it's actually not giving us oxidation, it's giving us reduction. So what we do to get oxidation is we just look at this value so in this case, it says 0 0.23 volt and just minus 0 0.23 volt and flip the sign. So from minus, it just becomes plus. And then this is our oxidation. So we put 0 0.23 volts, not minus 0 0.23 volts there. And then we add them two together to get our answer. And that is 1 point, this will be embarrassing if I get that wrong, 1.59 volts. Um, 1.59 volts as our potential. So that's our mark here because we've calculated our potential. So D, explain any color changes observed in the cell as the reaction proceeds. And what I wrote is nickel ions form as the reaction proceeds as nickel becomes oxidized. So we go from nickel to, so nickel here, and then the nickel will become oxidized. So electrons will leave over this wire and nickel 2 plus will form and that will drop into the actual solution. So as has happened more and more often, it goes from pale green in a second to intense green because there's more and more of these ions in there, nickel ions. So nickel ions form because um, nickel is being oxidized. The pale green color of the solution becomes more intense as nickel ions concentration increases. Nickel solution is green and the more nickel ions are in there, the more green it becomes. So beginning it was pale green, so it was slightly green, but then it becomes very intensely green. And you get one mark for saying that what happens to nickel, that nickel ion forms as nickel becomes oxidized. And another point for connecting the ions becoming oxidized and dropping in solution to so the change of the color from pale green to intense green. So that was your two marks. So overall, you've gotten your five marks for this. I hope, and also before I leave, um, this is where the actual questions came from. So the calculation part and the writing balance equation part came from this dot point. Um, so we have calculate potential and use standard potentials and half equations. So this is this one. And then we also had described the explaining galvanic cells in terms of oxidation reduction in our dot point. And that's where the whole, you know, being able to know which one's the cathode and which one's the anode and direction flow came from. And also this second part, this D, explain any color changes observed in the cell as direction proceeds that came from this dot point. And then the fine term anode cathode electrode, that was just the yeah, A as well. So I hope that was useful.